Hello, welcome to Lemon Mysteries, where we talk anything and everything entertainment. I'm, of course, alone himself, Zeke Lamone, and this is my review for Percy Jackson and the Olympians Season 1. But before we get into that, let's get the house clean out of the way, shall we? I'm going to need you to leave a like, comment below, let me know your thoughts on Percy Jackson and the Olympians. And, of course, hit that subscribe button as that helps me grow into my YouTube career. And um, he's not wanting to be on camera right now. But if you do subscribe, my dog Crash does get a treat. If he does decide to pop up and make a cameo, I will show him because... Y'all love to see him. But with all that out of the way, let's get into it, shall we? So, first and foremost, I am someone who has read the books of Percy Jackson and the Olympians. And I also saw the two movies when they first came out. Now, when I read the books, I was in middle school myself. And, you know, I am a 26-year-old who's looking at 27 in a couple months so you can do the math if you want, but it has been a long time since I read the books. And I'm gonna share a story of how I was feeling between this thing, because also within the movies, I do like them, okay? And now, as a, seventh, as a middle schooler, you know, you, or was in high school when they finally, what was I in high school when the movies finally came out? I don't really recall the timeline of it. But <laughs> I did like the movies when they came out, I thought, you know what, they did a pretty good job. And as I grew up and realizing other people did not like the movies whatsoever and saying they butchered it, they didn't do it right or whatever, um, I was like, oh, I thought they got made most of the beats right. And I did rewatch The Lightning Thief before going into season one. And I still, and I still thought that before watching the movie. Now, after watching this season and Again, I'm going to go back to the movie a little bit here and to basically saying, like, the people have a right to be upset by the movies because when the movies came out, you know, if you really think about it, it was during that boom period of all YA uh, films. Harry Potter came out and Disney was looking for their Harry Potter. Let, let's just call it like it is. And there's, there's the dog, but he doesn't want to be in camera, so if I had to pet him. Um, and they found him with Percy Jackson, but they aged him up a little bit and... You know, we got what we got. And again, for me, for the most part, they did fine. Understanding some of the limitations they may have had of what they had to cut and like, okay, let's just get the main beats and go from there. Um, and then watching this season, this show kicks the movie's ass. Absolutely. Now, this season wasn't perfect by any means, and I mean, no show is, but this was a huge step up. And my story that I want to share with y'all, and, you know, spoilers, because this is called, uh, the title is, Was This Good? I can only talk about if it was good if I go into spoilers, so if you haven't watched Percy Jackson and Olympians, overall I recommend it, but more analysis to come, but it's going to come with spoilers. So, y'all know at the end of the book, and at the end of the movie, and at the end of the show, Luke is revealed to be really the main mastermind behind everything, right? And... You know, kudos to the show, because, you know, I roughly remembered Ares, and I roughly remembered, yeah, he's actually the real true final battle, which is one of my complaints, uh, but not just with Ares' his battle, but all the battles overall, and as it kept going, I was like, was Luke never really a bad guy? Did they really wreck on that? Because a lot of people were upset, and I remember thinking, yeah, Luke is the bad guy, and I can understand why cutting Ares and all that stuff, and... <laughs> As the show kept going, I was like, maybe Luke's not a bad guy. And I was really the exhale that came out of me. Because I was telling a lot of people who at work who were telling me, yeah, you know, I heard a lot of people. I was just like, no, they do, the, they do it pretty justice. And I was like, oh, my God, am I about to be the biggest? Are they going to think I'm the biggest liar? Because I started doubting, which is props to the show, because I started believing that Luke was good. And once it was revealed, he's not. Whoo, I was so excelled. But now, back into the analysis. And the main problem with the show, and really my only problem with it, really, everything else is very nitpicky, is that the group never faced any adversity. And, you know, the same can be same with the movies as well. As, you know, Percy in the movies is basically a Mary Sue. He had no prep time whatsoever, and he was just beating fools left and right. 
In the show, it's really no different. I mean, they do do some things different where every episode there is a flashback that goes back to where the person was younger or when he was at camp and he and he's able to apply what he has learned from the past and able to either relate it to the situation that he's currently in or how he's able to overcome it. So therefore, he's not completely a Mary Sue, but you know, he's still pretty OP, <laughs> to be completely honest with you. And every fight, they always build up, oh, Medusa is going to be a challenge. She's going to be a really big challenge, which she should be. Oh, the mother monster is a, such a threat. It's such a threat. Oh my God, this casino makes time go slower. It's going to be so much harder. Ares is literally the god of war. There's no way we can, we can beat him. And they really beat every single person very easily, especially in the final episode when it comes to Ares. You really mean to tell me the god of war, a literal god, the, all the others are basically Hades henchmen, sure, fine, whatever. But the uh, Ares fight, who they fight a legit god, and it's just like, well, there's rules. Like, what? <laughs> and that's how he's able to beat him, and it's just, he hits one wave, and he's just distracted enough. I've seen better finishes in pro wrestling. Y'all know I'm a huge wrestling fan. Like, that's... It, it just really irked me. And the same thing w with Medusa. Like, oh, you mean to tell me Grover was just flying and they magically beat her? You know, again, it, I'm probably repeating it way too many times at this point. It's been a long time since I've read the books. Maybe it, it is a battle of conveniences of how they beat these gods and villains in the books. But in the show, regardless, even if it was easy in the book, I, I needed more adversity from them. I, I, I just honestly personally did. Just to see like, oh man, when they get to the end, it's just that much more fulfilling. The only time when I did feel adversity somewhat between them was when they were fighting the mother the mother of monsters because Percy was weak with the uh, with the horn in it. And you know, and on in the battle in the St. Louis Arch, I don't know what it's called, but that battle was pretty good. And that was pretty good adversity for the most part with making them handicapped. And then uh, when they got to the underworld, that, they, there was also some adversity there too with the dog and all that stuff. That, that, was, that was pretty cool. Um, but besides that, everything else was pretty easily convincing. I did like the addition of the backstories uh, to show why Percy is pretty good. And the cast is great. They, they really nailed the cast for the most part. And I mean, it, it is a young cast. So, you know, some, some spots were a little bit iffy to me within the uh, acting portion of it, but they're going to grow. And they are going to be absolutely stellar. But the main three, they really, they really nailed. Um, they, I mean, uh, Walker, I, I don't remember his last name, but the, the man who plays uh, Percy, he's going to be a star in the making. Like, uh, if, you know, he just keeps his head down, he just keeps working hard, he's going to be a really big time star. And I think the girl who played Annabeth is going to be uh, pretty good as well. And Grover, Grover was great too. But th those two, I mean, again, the trio is great, but those two were just stellar so they have a very very good uh, career moving forward um as for everyone else in the supporting cast luke was also pretty good but you know you have to make him good because you know he's going to be you know in other seasons and you know i and i did state it i'm a huge uh pro wrestling fan and seeing adam copeland aka edge um is uh also in the show and he was aries was also really cool to see they really did do the book justice for the most part of it. And it does make me want to pick it up and read it again and probably read the others as well. Just so that way I don't have this panic attack uh, watching week to week uh, as I did in this show as well. And again, they just they just overall did a very good job. It blows the movies out of the water. Um, and it's a really good time. I mean, if you haven't watched Percy Jackson and Olympians, if you think it's too... Uh, if you're too old for it now, I don't think so. I still think, uh, I mean, me as a, again, a 26 year old about to turn 27 had a very, very great time with it. I think there's a lot of heart. The chemistry is really good. What they do lack in action, they do make up for it within the storytelling and the character beats and understand where the arcs come from. Like I really love the final battle between Luke and um, Percy, which is not really a final battle because with how the blocking is of it and what the, what the motivations behind the fight was like luke wasn't trying to kill percy and percy was really mainly just playing defense the whole entire time but also of course luke has to win he he can't lose he's the one who's been training percy and luke just had to win and it wasn't about 
killing Percy, it was about getting him through the portal. So it was more just about pushing. Very, very good final blocking within that fight. And then, you know, what they tacked on at the end and then the setup season two, which I hope they do get. Like, again, I'm really curious to see how much this can grow. Um, I do think this has a good six seasons in it. I, and, you know, there is six books. There, I think there is a seventh, but it has nothing to do with, like, the gods and all that stuff. I don't, I don't think I ever finished it or even really started it. Like, I just heard that there's a... It's either the sixth or the seventh book. And, you know, after they beat after they win they uh there's like a final project with them being a senior and he's trying to get to college or something like that that he has to ask the gods for or something like that but that's either here or there but have you watched percy jackson and Olympians? comment below let me know um have you read the books let me know how you feel about the books and did you watch the movies are you like me who actually enjoy them or are you with the public uh who mainly do not like them which is fine i mean i understand that now i mean it, it was a cash grab at the end of the day um, which I, I hate that term. I don't, uh, I hate that I used it because every movie is a cash grab. Every show is a cash grab. They're not going to make something just to make it. They hope to make a profit off of it. So every project is a cash grab. And yet here I am using it. It's so, it's so horrible of me. But yes, comment below. Let me know. Hit that subscribe button because again, it gives my dog a treat who is now just laying in bed looking at me, looking all cute. We're probably going to go to bed after this. But yeah, and until next time, guys, I'll see you here at Lemon Studios.